The title of the show is Even Sparkles Have Shadows because all of the artworks are dazzling and playful, bright, colorful. They invite the viewer in and then you realize that there's a deeper meaning to them. Sometimes there's a darker meaning and that brings out the shadow aspect or a surprising and shocking aspect that they weren't expecting when they saw it from a distance. This veneer that we put on in society that we're smiling, that we're cheerful, that we're playing along and being happy, but that there's often a story behind the mask that we wear, beneath the surface. The way that the exhibition is designed and laid out is to reflect that title. When you come into the room, two of the walls are lit by the gallery lights. And that's what you see when you first walk in. But you're also surprised by turning to your left and seeing that two of the walls are darkened and that it's the artworks themselves that are creating the light or that there's a black light on these large tapestries. And so when you move around the room, all of the artworks are creating a conversation in the viewer and that all of these artworks are in harmony with each other in some way, that the materials that are being used, that the colors that are being used, that there really is a sequence that has been thought out of how they're being combined. It really is a, a group exhibition of conversations. This exhibition was one of the first shows that the Torrance Art Museum reopened to the public with right after the pandemic. And I designed the exhibition to be bright and colorful and to be a happy exhibition that both children and adults would love. It still reflected a lot of the issues that we as a society have been going through, both with social media, with the onslaught of daily news, but gave them something to be curious about, something to really reflect on that was deeper and a little darker. The first trio of artworks that you experience when you come into the gallery are by the artist Alison Regett. The pair of roller skates that is on the pedestal on the floor stuck in a big pile of gum, symbolic of what we as a society have experienced with COVID and the pandemic is that everything has just come to a halt. We were skating along and now we're stuck really trying to move through a very difficult phase in our lives. And it's also reflective in her sculpture pieces on the wall that are dripping and oozing this sparkling, colorful goo. The entire system has been clogged up and is leaking. She's combining porcelain and silicone rubber to create these really magnificent sculptures so on the second gallery wall, we have these two large-scale paintings by the artist Ken Gunmen. He studied fine art painting and very traditional painting in Korea before he moved to America, started working for the film industry, and now he is pulling from his traditional background, but mixing it in with abstract and a lot of contemporary painting styles with his own technique, his own style. These two portraits are a critique on hypermasculinity. It depicts these two male figures that are overly muscled. In many ways, he's distorting the shapes and the colors, and they become these very fascinating and grotesque figures in these poses like muscle men. 
Stevie has been working many years with these really fabulous fur materials, these bright colored paints and sequins and, and sparkly elements. But she experienced a severe tragedy in 2020 when a fire burnt her storage unit, which was full of 25 years of her past work, was all destroyed. After the dust had kind of settled from the fire, a month or two later, she noticed that two juniper bushes that were destroyed started to spring anew with life. And that sensation of seeing new life sprouting up from the devastation of the fire gave her inspiration. And so she started a new series of works. These two magnificent large tapestries by Zara Monet Fini. It's almost as if these tapestries have been yanked down off of the wall a little bit and pulled out sort of adding to this sensation of the decay and the downfall of the glamour of the aristocracy. It depicts the Queen Elizabeth on both of the tapestries and then has double imagery where also behind her is King George. She made these two tapestries during the pandemic, thinking about Corona means crown, She's also reflecting upon how colonialism has been a pandemic and has been a virus. And we are still experiencing the repercussions that colonialism has wrought across the planet, just like the virus is still lingering. Which brings us to the sculpture pieces suspended from the ceiling in the middle of the gallery by David Holland. There are actually three sculpture pieces, but they're arranged almost to be like one united piece. He was influenced for these pieces by biological figures. This was all before the pandemic. And I think now having them suspended in the gallery, no one can really escape from that idea or that thought that they are looming, that there are dangerous things in the air that we can't see. But here they are, beautiful, on view, as if we have you know, taken a microscope and are seeing it allude to what we're dealing with now. And so now we come to the fourth wall of the gallery. Again, it's in the dark, but it has these bold, dazzling, illuminated works by Michael Craig Carrier and Halle Mashian. It's this LED backlit mixed media painting that she has uh, layered with all of this resin and glitter and paint. And then it has the shock of the LED lights. You see this pulsating rhythm of red and blue and green. She's depicting these giant teardrops that are coming down are for her reflective of the feminine experience, of the pain and the suffering that women have had to go through, but also of the joy and the strength and the power that can come from having those experiences. So she's pouring into this painting and this work, all of this intention, and then you can reflect further deeper on the story. The works by Michael Craig Carrier draw you in. They're made of neon. And then a lot of the viewers take a step back because they realize that what they're seeing are rattlesnake skins that have been stretched across the neon and that the neon is shining through them. And so there's this very unsettling experience that you have. You want to go in, you want to touch them, but you know that it's a rattlesnake and it's dangerous and you, you want to run. So it creates this experience that's very unsettling for people, but very much pulling them in. Chuck Hong has a video in the gallery. It's called Vanitas Impia. It has a beautiful table laid out, but Chuck slowly goes through the process of deconstructing and destroying the beautiful scenery, but in a very humorous and absurd way that 
people have been very enthralled by watching. Chuck sews these teddy bears from reused materials and fabric that he gets from friends. I love seeing how the children and families have responded to it. Chuck also has a bear in the lobby of the museum. It's called Be Sainted, and he made it specifically for this show and then adorned it with all these crystals and paints and teeth inspired by the holy saints that are skeletons in these highly adorned and sparkling gowns. One of the comments that I've received from a lot of people is how tactile this show is and how even though they're not supposed to touch artwork, they want to touch all of the artwork because it just appeals to them so much.